Hello, this is Thomas Ott from NeuralMarketTrends.com. Welcome to my 13th video tutorial on RapidMiner 5.0. It's been a while since my last video, but I'm slowly getting into the swing of things. And just to give you a sneak peek, I will be talking about more financial text mining in the next couple of videos. But for today, I want to talk to you about something that is very important to help you increase your model's performance, it's parameter optimization. Let's take as an example, you have built a model and you have used a neural net operator and you used the standard, I'm sorry, the default values assigned to it in Rapid Miner and you got a performance output. Let's just say it's 50%. Well, that may not be a good performance ratio or performance measure for you. And you might be wondering, well, how can I make that a little bit better? Or in some cases, significantly better? Well, you could try tweaking your parameters. Perhaps in neural net operator, you could adjust your learning rate or your momentum. You may even consider adding a couple of hidden layers. Or in the case of, say, if you had a support vector machine, uh, maybe try different kernels, maybe a dot kernel or a radial kernel, or even adjusting the C value. All of those parameter tweaks could make a difference in your performance measure of the data that your model is training on, and henceforth a better prediction once you apply the trained data set to your prediction set. So how will we do that in Rapid? How would we start that process? Well, it's very simple. We would use something called the parameter optimization operator. And it's located right here under process control. And it's right here. There's, a several, there's several of them right here. Um, I typically like to use the optimize parameter grid operator. And I'll show you how to use it. But first, let's use a data set We'll use the iris data set as an example. It may not necessarily be the best example, but for the course of this video, just to get my readers started on how to do this, it's probably a good way to go. So let's grab iris. Okay, let's just delete the, this guy. And let's just take a look at what iris looks like when we run it. Okay, in the data view, you can see we have an ID, we have a label, and we have four attributes that explain the different types of irises. And we would typically train a model on this and eventually you know, use that model to predict something against. So let's go back here. Let's just do a standard, let's go here and do a standard building block or insert a building block. Where are we here? Yes. Okay, let's get the new building block. We're going to do a, let's try a numerical X validation. There we go. This is the neat part. Let's go back up here. Disconnect him. Move him up here. Model output, performance output. And we're going to replace this one, say, with a neural net operator. Okay, we're going to go to modeling, classification, neural net training, and we will just use this new neural net. Now let's just click on the neural net. You can see over here on the right, it has 500 training cycles. That's a default value. Same thing with the learning rate, momentum, shuffle and normalize. These are all um, default values. So let's just take a look at, when we run this, what type of performance we get. We're running, and let's see here. Our performance vector is currently being created. And here we go. In this case, well, we have a very high accuracy of 97.33 for our multi-class classification performance. Okay, so now let's see. Let's see if we can try to make this better. What will we do? Well, let's get the parameter optimization. And you can see here the parameter optimization operator is also a nested operator. You have to put something inside, just like validation here, which has, you know, if you look at open up, it has the neural net operator 
and the testing phase of the operators, the apply model and performance. The optimized parameter one will also have something similar to that here. When we open it up, you can see here, this is where you would do the optimization process. So what are we trying to optimize? We're trying to optimize this data that's in this example set. But how would we do that? All of our training is done in this validation operator. Well, you optimize what's in the validation operator. So let's select it. We cut it, move them up, make our connections, connect the performance and the parameter, and even the results if you want to, and open them up, and let's paste in that validation operator. Okay, just connect it to the inputs, and what we're going to do is you have to connect this AV out average performance out to this performance uh, sync. Now, what I also like to do is I like to add a log file. And I just take the log file and drag them here. And this will become apparent in a minute. Before we continue with the log, let's go back up one level to the optimized parameter operator. You can see down here, there is a message. There's an error message. We need to define the possible combinations of parameters. Okay, let's go do that. Let's select on this and we go over here to edit parameter settings. Now in this case, for this example, I just want to find what is the best learning rate and momentum to try to optimize my model. You have multiple operators here which you can use to optimize so many different things. But we're going to select the neural net and out of these parameters, we want to optimize the learning rate and the momentum. So we select those, move them over here, and now we're almost ready to go. Let's select it. Now we have to individualize what we want to optimize. So on the learning rate, our minimum, our minimum range, let's say is 0.1, because it's the lowest learning rate, and the maximum, let's just say, is 0 0.9. And what Rapid Miner will do is it will take these two values, these are the thresholds, minimum and max, and it will use 10 steps. You see here, it gets kind of grayed out down here. These will be the variable learning rates it's going to use. You can do this in five steps if you want. You can do this in 100 steps if you want. Or you could just leave it as, let's say, let's just do five. Likewise, the same thing we have to do with the neural net momentum. We do a minimum of 0.1, maximum of 0.9. We'll do it in five steps. And now we're good. We're good to go. Now, you could even click on list here, and you can actually select your own values that you want. But we're not going to do that here. Let's go back to the grid. Make sure we're all set here. Okay. Oop, looks like it defaulted back once you do that. I shouldn't have done that. Let's go back here and put these in. Go back to here. Okay, this guy stayed the same. Good. Five steps, five steps. We're good. Now, one thing to take a look at. You see down here, it says two parameters. That's how many that we're optimizing. And based on what the steps we're using, there's going to be 36 combinations are going to happen. So Rapid Miner is going to go through 36 iterations and try to find the best optimized parameter for the neural net operator. So, okay. Now, before we begin run, let's go back to that log operator that I put in here. And I'm going to show you something neat you're going to do. You're going to be able to watch the performance happen while it's running if you use the log operator. You can save it to a file name. In this case, we're just going to click on the edit list and we're going to put some current parameters in here. Add an entry. Add an entry for the learning momentum, learning, so learning rate. We're going to select neural net. We're going to select the parameter, and we're going to select the learning rate as the value. Put another entry. Now we're going to do the momentum. momentum. Same thing, neural net. Parameter. And we're going to do momentum here. And now we're going to do performance. But we are going to select the performance operator. And we're going to do the value right there. 
Okay, hit OK. Let's run the process. We're running. So let's open this up over here. And you should see, see the little log comes in. Take a look at the table. And here you go. As RapidMiner is progressing, it's actually logging the various changes between the learning rate, the combinations of learning rate, momentum, and their performance. See, you can see here that 0.42 learning rate and a momentum of 0.1 gives you, I guess, a perfect, um, a perfect uh, performance. But that's not necessarily correct. It's just going through iterations right now. But it gives you an idea of what the combinations could be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this video while this processes. It um, should be over in about two minutes. Uh, before I do, I should let you know the more combinations you have, the stronger the computer hardware you should use because this is a heavy-duty time sink. You could run this for hours easily. So let me pause it and I'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. The parameter optimization in this case took, I think, about 1 minute and 44 seconds. And you are now presented with the parameter set results right here. You can see that our accuracy increased ever so slightly because it was a near perfect data set. It went from 97.33%, if I remember correctly, to 98% using a neural net learning rate of 0.9 and a momentum of 0.58. Let's go over here. See, same thing. You only have one classification error. 98% perfect. Now, of course, now this was just a simple data set. Um, your data sets will vary with performance, but this is something to look into if you really want to fine tune all your parameters to try to get a little extra juice out of your data set, a little extra performance out of it. See here as well, here's the log form. This is just used to kind of keep an eye on things and where you're going. And if we take a look at it. You can see that all the best ones for almost 100% performance, the best were in this range. But after it evaluated the data, it came back and said, this is the best combination. Learning rate 0.9 and a momentum of 0.58. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I look forward to seeing you, leaving me comments and questions. I'm always around. Please do note that I am very busy these days and I may not answer your comment or email right away. But I look forward to talking to you and thank you very much. This is Thomas Ott from NeuralMarketTrends.com. Have a great evening.